Live from the Bay Area's news station, this is the Cron 4 Morning News. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cron 4 News Weekend at 8.30. I'm Isabel Duran. Good morning. I'm Marty Gonzalez. Another high seas rescue app. Still to come on Cron 4 News Weekend, being yourself. Well, it seems easy enough to say, but uh, there are a lot of times when it's just too tough to do. Yeah, we're going to talk to an author who will have some tips on being your authentic self. That's coming up. Be yourself sounds easy enough, but for a lot of people, it is tough to gain the confidence to display your authenticity in every situation. Yeah, there's a new book titled Be Yourself, Everyone Else is Taken, and <laughs> it offers techniques allowing readers to be themselves every minute of every day. And joining us this morning is the author of that book, Mike Robbins. Mike, thanks a lot for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about the thought process behind being yourself all day because it does sound fairly easy. It does. I mean, the concept sounds easy, right? right? But right. in reality, I think most of us know, I know I do, it can be challenging. And in my work as a speaker and an author and coach working with people, a lot of people mm -hmm. say that they want other people to be authentic with them, they want to be real and honest, but it's a little more difficult to actually do than it is just to say. Yeah. So, what is authentic? Because oftentimes people think, hey, I'm real. I'm, right. I'm, you know, I'll tell it like it I'm is. Being and real. Yeah, and exactly. other folks don't like that, you <laughs> yeah. know. So. Well, I think there's some misconceptions. Being authentic doesn't mean getting in people's face all the time and telling them everything that you think. You know, it really is about being honest, being vulnerable, sometimes admitting when you don't know something. You know, and it's different for you than it is for me than it is for you. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a unique thing. But I think the more we can get used to you know, telling ourselves the truth. You know, the whole first part of the book, I actually have readers really confront what makes it difficult or challenging, whether it's cultural background, whether it's how we were raised, maybe our own personal fears, ideas that we have. I can't really tell the truth because I might get in trouble or people won't like me. So if we can confront that, then we can start to move beyond it and be more honest and real mm -hmm. in our lives and relationships. It also seems it would be difficult for a lot of people to show vulnerability, especially in the workplace. It is. You know, I was giving a presentation at a company here in the Bay Area just a couple weeks ago, and mm -hmm. I, we were talking about this, and I asked what makes it hard to be authentic and a woman raised her hand in the back of the room she said well I used to do that in the beginning of my career and it didn't go so well so I don't do it anymore and I said how long ago was that and she said 19 years yeah. and everybody in the room laughed but there was a sense of sadness because a lot of us have decided especially at work can't do it mm -hmm. but I work a lot in the business world and I tell you what people are really starving for authenticity in business just like in the rest of our culture mm -hmm. well it strikes I was gonna say oh is this a new trend now yes. because you know we've got a president so let's be real let's be yes. you know and you got folks saying we want our, our legislators to be real and authentic yeah but is that true well I, I think it, it depends you know right. we have this idea it's now a catchphrase it was yeah. big in the presidential campaign on yes. both sides yes. but I think you know some of the principles that I talk about on a personal level in the book one of them is to transform your fear now that doesn't mean not to be scared, but what it does mean is actually to start to get more honest and real about being nervous. You know, a lot of times, being on television like this, I sit here and pretend like I know what <laughs> I'm talking about and don't acknowledge the fact that, oh, I'm nervous and how do I look or am I saying the right thing or what are people thinking who are watching? And if we can get more honest about that in our lives, it actually can liberate us. And when I'm coaching people, I often ask them to talk about, well, what are you scared about? And mm -hmm. they kind of look around like, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah. But once you do say it, like any other emotion, it kind of dissipates and then you can move forward. One of the things you're really talking about is taking a risk. Yeah. Here. Absolutely. Being able to take a risk. You know, another one of the, the principles is be bold. You know, Michael Jordan had a great quote about this. He said, I missed 100% of the shots I never took. <laughs> so it's really about looking in our lives. And it could be big things or small things. Mm -hmm. What are we willing to ask for? What are we willing to say? You know, do we have hopes and dreams? Do we have fears and doubts? And there's a boldness it takes to often be honest about that stuff. But another one of my favorite sayings is the answer is always no if you don't ask. Right. Sure. Well, yeah. you said deal with conflicts directly and effectively because we said the in-your-face doesn't really get Not it. necessarily. <laughs> There's a couple things about conflicts. There's only two ways to deal with a conflict effectively, either directly until it's resolved. Now, that sometimes can be a little bumpy. One but way or the other right, is resolved. The, the yeah. other way is to let it go completely. Now, we usually do what I call door number three, which is we don't really deal with it directly, right? And we don't let, and it, we go. Don't let it go. So <laughs> then we just tell everyone else about it. But one yeah. of the things that we can start to do in our conflicts is to use I statements. And we've all heard this, but instead of saying you, why did you do this? I don't like, you know, I feel, I want, I noticed. And when we can use those I statements to be a little more honest about it, I'm feeling upset, I'm concerned about this, mm -hmm. that takes the conversation in a whole different way, and often people are more willing to engage.
As with most things where you're changing your lifestyle, you're changing yes. your mindset, this is not an overnight process. This mm -hmm. is something that's going to take days and weeks and even years. Absolutely. I mean, I, I really look at it as it's a lifelong process. You know, mm -hmm. my hope is that my book, Be Yourself, Everyone Else Has Already Taken, can get people wherever they are on their path, you know, continuing moving down that path with some tips and techniques. But really, it's something that we got to engage in all the time. It's not like we get it and we got it. It's really can we continue to have conversations and relationships in our work life, in our personal lives with our families that are real and genuine and we gotta keep practicing and it really takes the people around us as well doing it. It's more a yeah. community conversation as opposed to an individual thing. So mm -hmm. it's like a change up in style. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of Speaking okay, of change ups, <laughs> we, we wanted to touch upon the fact that you that you played uh, professional baseball. You played at Stanford and then you you were drafted by the Kansas City Royals. Yes. And with the start of the baseball season, we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, about steroids. Yes. And and what you may have seen or not seen back in the 90s when you right. were playing ball. So I was playing in the mid 90s in the minor leagues. You know, I got injured my third season in the minors, so I never got to the big leagues. I did hear a bit about, steroids weren't as prevalent back then, mm -hmm. but one of the things, that people ask me this question a lot, and I say for myself personally, if I had been given the opportunity to take steroids, the reason that I probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have been the cheating issue as mm -hmm. much as it would have been the health issue, because I had heard lots of things about what could happen to you. And I understand why people are so upset about this, but what people got to understand is how unbelievably competitive baseball is. And the other part of it, how it relates a lot to my message in my book, is that even those guys at that incredibly high level, feeling like they're not good enough as they are, having to take steroids or something to feel like I got to be just that much better. I think it's more of a commentary on our culture and how competitive we are, mm -hmm. and not really appreciating who we are and what we have. So there's you know? been a, there, there's been a lot of finger pointing yes. and and uh, you did it and you did it and so on and so forth. But but is is there change uh, going to happen? Uh, is the culture going to change so it doesn't demand this kind of output from athletes? I think so. I do some work with some professional baseball organizations. I was just down in Arizona with the Diamondbacks during spring training, and I think the culture is changing in baseball. Hmm. The accountability has changed, and they've seen what's happened. The problem, I think, for all of us, even as baseball fans, is with all this rumor and innuendo and finger pointing and everything. <laughs> yeah. Very few of the guys have been able to really look anyone in the eye and say, you know what, I did it. I'm sorry, I felt pressured, everyone else was doing it, no one was getting caught, no one was really getting tested. And if someone could really do that in an authentic way, I think we'd yeah, forgive them like that. Yeah. But so our culture, you know, like in politics and other things, it's deny, deny, deny until you get painted in a corner, right. and then you absolutely yeah. have to then admit it. Then you do the mea yeah. culpa. Yeah. 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 Then you don't look right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Exactly. It's great. The title of the book, again, is Be Yourself, Everyone <laughs> Else Has Taken. Mike Robbins is the author, and you have a couple of book signings today at 10 o'clock, the Unity Church in San Francisco, and then this afternoon at Clayton Books uh, in, oddly enough, Clayton. So, <laughs> thanks a lot for joining us, Mike. Thanks and for check having your me. website. So thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. And we'll be right back. <laughs>